Hello, I'm Dan Steiner from DL Steiner Incorporated. I'm a professional electrical engineer. I have been working with industrial power distribution for 35 years and have been involved for the past 20 years in assisting companies in developing an electrically safe workplace. The statistics on electrical accidents are sobering. An average each year in the U.S., there are 4,000 non-disabling electrical contact injuries, 3,600 disabling electrical contact injuries, and one person is electrocuted every day. There are in excess of 2,000 workers sent to burn centers. Electrical arc flash burns account for 10% of all burn center victims. These facts show why you and every worker who comes in contact with electrical hazards should care deeply about pursuing electrical safety in the workplace and why the NFPA 70E is important to you. Electrical use is so common that we have taken it for granted and become complacent to its risk. If each worker had a vivid understanding of the potential danger lurking behind every switch and panel from electrical energy, they would make it a priority to understand and apply the electrical safety procedures found in OSHA and NFPA 70E regulations. So let's take a few moments to better understand these risks. There are three basic risk categories associated with electrical use. They are electric shock, arc flash, arc blast. Without proper care, any one of them could intrude dangerously into your workplace. Chances are you have experienced some type of shock, probably in your own home. While many are killed due to shock at home, the risk is far greater in industrial settings. Second significant electrical hazard in the workplace is arc flash. Most people feel that if they simply don't touch electrical conductors, they are safe. But they don't understand the hazard of electrical arc flash. You do not have to be touching an energized conductor to be harmed by electricity. You can see that an electrical arc can be sustained over a gap of many feet through nothing but air. There is a specific distance where electricity will jump across an air gap between two conductors like the spark in a spark plug or an arc welder. This is called the arc over distance. The distance the arc will jump depends upon the voltage. The more voltage available, the further it will jump. When an arc begins, it has a tendency to grow. The arc produces a cloud of electrically conducting plasma. The plasma conducts electricity much better than the air. This allows more electricity to pour into the arc, and the size of the arc grows and grows. This is the beginning of an arc flash. With enough current available, it can grow to awesome proportions in a fraction of a second. According to OSHA, live parts to which an employee may be exposed shall be de-energized before the employee works on or near them, unless the employer can demonstrate that de-energizing introduces additional or increased hazards or is infeasible due to equipment design or operational limitations. Remember for an accident to occur, three things all must be present. A hazard, exposure to the hazard, and a trigger. A de-energized circuit effectively removes the hazard to the worker. In the absence of harmful electrical energy, the worker is safe. There are times when hazardous electrical activity will intrude in your workplace. So how can you identify the level of risk and take the appropriate steps to protect yourself? OSHA and the NFPA 70E require appropriate warning labels to be applied to electrical equipment that may pose a threat of shock or arc flash to employees. They contain important safety information for the employee when live conductors are exposed or when operating a circuit breaker, fuse switch, or resetting a starter. Label sizes and color schemes may vary, but soon they will fall into two distinct categories. For extremely dangerous situations, the red and white danger label will be used. For less extreme hazards, the orange and black warning label will be used. Be aware, both labels represent a high level of risk that may result in serious injury or death.